I would like to use this model that's being used in social media quite often at the moment as a way to layer onto the need centered approach to practice design, but also how you need to adapt practice based on what you see linked into the capability of your athletes link to the lighthouse your reference tool referencing match conditions how you want them to perform execute make choices adapt in match conditions in actual competition so i'm going to lay it onto this the elements of the need centered dive down into what each of the individual environment and task really looks like linked into the pds way of coaching but also give you an insight into the things you may need to think about that may influence not just the design but what you may need to change and even throw away based on what you see at the time. The first point we need to look at here is understanding, although the model had environment, we need to break down match environment to practice environment. And why is that? Because you'd say, well, actually, Mark, it should be the same. Remember, it's not the same. We need to build it to be as much like as we can. But practice isn't just let's play a game and let's blow the whistle like an umpire referee would. Actually, it's looking at what do we need to build to. So we need to understand and keep an eye on for a reference in what are those match conditions. But also we need to understand what do we need to do in the moment in this practice session that will build towards the way we want to play in the match. So this is why it's really important to make the connection of what are we actually doing in practice that links into the match that links into your lighthouse. Breaking the individual down, you can see there are two key elements. There's the individual and collective capability. So if you are just working with an individual, clearly this would just apply to them. But in team sports, it is about the collective capability. And that is the people on the court or on the pitch where you are. So an individual, and we're talking about present capability. This is really important, their present capability, not what they could be, not what you'd like them to be, where they actually are. So their present physical mental state, their skill, their game IQ, their communication, based on communication being being able to have an effective impact with others, but also being able to accept, embrace, action, the information and data they are getting from their teammates or indeed from the coach. So all of that is really important. Now, the reason why it's capability is collective as well is you could have individuals that are awesome at that. But then when they go on the court or the pitch as a collective, they may not be very good at working together and adapting live based on what they see. So you also will have actually for these set of players on the court, the pitch, this is their present capability with others. You might move two or three in, or even one in for that combination. This is their collective capability that will also impact what it should impact how you plan the sessions. Now, the ARP, the action review process, is another framework that is a game changer that's obviously taught within the members area of looking at the decision making and the reviewing live. Now, that's just not for the athlete. That's for the coach as well. The coach being able to work through it. How am I present? How is my state? OK, what am I seeing? Looking at the options that they can do based on once they identify the source of an issue then deciding on the choice they're going to make the intervention, committing to it with the right style of communication, then reviewing how was the choice they made, how was the execution for an athlete. That is clearly looking at what am I seeing? That's the scanning. What are all the options? I Then deciding on a choice based on the human factor, environmental, situational factors. That is huge part of game IQ that I don't feel a lot of us work on developing with athletes beyond just what looks on a computer screen, then committing to the choice without fear and review the choice and execution live to come up with next time I or next time we, and then obviously within the spiral circle, being able to connect if it's a we, self let other players, athletes know if it's an I, if you need to change or recognition when you're doing things great. I go into a separate element, deep dive on that, but it's just giving you an understanding of already looking at the individual, there's some key elements that are predominantly software that ensures that they are, can exploit their capability in the technical, tactical, and physical. So that is just one element. To nail down some key points to this, you can see top right, 
always benchmark present capability. So what I mean by that is do not get stuck into working into half court, pitch, quarter, doing some drills. And remember, meaning of drill could be just breaking out, doing something that's still decision making. It doesn't mean just standing there, not thinking and doing high repetition. But you've got to benchmark in a game environment. The benchmarking should happen often in practice. And I strongly recommend where you can straight after warm up you go into a match play even if it's five ten minutes and what you're doing is you're scanning for where is a capability you should be looking for things you worked on in a session before two sessions a week ago session that they showed they could do but it was in short-term memory we were working on it is it still there now or has it decreased so this is your benchmarking when i talk about benchmarking now that's really going to help you because then that's saying yes i think they are where i thought they were or no they're not there's an, an area now I need to focus on now that wasn't on my session plan, but it's critical because it takes priority on what I was going to plan and be fine with that because you're identifying the source and you're investing in there. Now you look at the left hand side, the critical influences in each present moment at self with teammates and the opposition. So remember capability in the present may be different than capability at their best. So this could be right there. Right now they are fatigued. Well, now they're fatigued, their capability has reduced. Now, for some, when they get physically fatigued, you may find their scanning drops. Now, if their scanning drops, they're not going to see all the options potentially. That's going to impact their decision making. So when we're looking at physical fatigue, we are not just looking at they can't run faster. They may Their reactions may slow down. It's also part of the software process as well. So it's really important to benchmark. And that's also why we need a pressure load in practice, because we need to see how are they at managing that if fatigue starts to set in? How is their present capability now? Now I'm recognizing there's nothing I can do about it right now. This is what happens after 15, 20 minutes of this particular athlete or combination of athletes. Well, being game IQ smart now, what do they now they can't do this? What do they need to be mindful of to keep focused on? And they may need to make the ball do more work. They may need to adjust their present choices. They may need to adjust it because somebody else is capable of drop. So there's no point in working that ball over into that space because now that player is no longer capable of getting it. They were when they started or when they're fresh and strong. So, again, huge importance, not just for us as coaches, but for getting the athletes to understand that itself and others and how to adapt based on the needs in the moment. You can see we're still on the individual at the moment. This, in my opinion, is something we don't explicitly share well enough. And also, if we look at that ourselves as as coaches, when we're looking at our team, if we work through them, we can start to see where the problem may lie within matches. And what I mean by that is this is how we want players to be. This is where we want their competencies. So we want them to identify the source of a problem, not just there is a problem. This is I'm talking about live in a match. And obviously we need to replicate this in practice where there's many ways we can do this. Two, we want them to identify the solution live, not stopping for a chat. This is all live. And then effectively share the solution with the relevant teammates if that's just not a self process. Often if it's a self, I need to let my teammates know, right, that's me. I'm going to do this to build their confidence. But as a team, is have we worked out what to say in this moment? So when I know my teammate hears me say that or she say that, then actually I know what it means and I know what I need to do. So that's part of the three A's is internalizing accepting it, acknowledging it, and acting on it as part of the framework of the rule of three which i go through separately now the fourth one is we then action that verbalized solution at self or as a collective this in itself is a game changer in our planning design when we start to look at this because we may start to find ah this is where my players fall down so what am I doing about it in my planning as a coach and in live sessions to help them become better at this? If your solution is I'll shout the answer, then you have a different lighthouse than the need centered approach because we want them to be able to almost make the coach redundant. We want them to be able to effectively make the best decision live, commit with intent, review live execution and choice and adapt accordingly as a collective without the need for the coach. Then the coach can just step in and fine tune the things, some of the things they may not see. But we shouldn't be we shouldn't be the dominant answer to that. That is so important. 
And if we really looked at that last element I spoke about is this is what can happen. Often coaches, and I'm generalizing here as I always do, but there's a lot of coaches out there that will get very frustrated at players. Why can't they think for themselves? Why can't they make these choices when they put under pressure or live in play? But we've got to ask ourselves, what are we doing to, to stop them from rubbernecking to us to look for us for the solution? Or was that right, coach? Or what does coach want me to do now? So this is where the problem lies, because a lot of athletes, they know there's a problem, but they can't identify the solution because they don't know how to get to the source of the problem. So they might use communication, but often it's telling an athlete what they did wrong, not what they need to change. And often what happens is then they'll look to the coach what to do next or change, or they already know the coach is shouting the answer across. So this we need to ask ourselves, and if you listen to this now, really think about yourself is, am I building this or am I, because I want them to be successful in the moment, am I shouting the answer, am I giving the answer? Am I doing lots of stops in play where they can talk to me and tell me the answer or one or two players do and the others are quiet, but actually they don't do it live and doing it live has to be the answer. We can't wait for the timeouts or half time before they tell us what they want to do differently than they should have done before. Don't tell me the answer, show me the answer. So are you part of the solution here or are you part of the problem? This is a key question that you really need to reflect on in not only in your planning, but also in your software development of your athletes and your time in a session to cultivate it, knowing that you might not get as quick answer as you want. You may not see what you want, but the needs to approach is build now that's going to give you a turn in weeks, months time. And actually, if, if coaches are doing this early on at grassroots sport, that's going to set an athlete up in life if they don't stay in the sport in anything they do, because this is part of good leadership, good decision making give you confidence in what you're doing anywhere. But if they do continue in the sport, this could be the difference between their software effectiveness and getting selected above someone that's technically, tactically good, but can't make decisions live. Now, if we move to the match environment, these are the main elements I'm sure we're all aware of. It's important we want our athletes to be aware of it as well, is location, could be an environmental influencer, full court pitch, course size, the, the weather, teammates, opposition, umpires, referees, calls, crowds, spectators, friends and family. They can all be environmental issues. Never mind the rules of the game and what we're doing in the moment. All of these things. Now, if that's the match environment, what we need to ask ourselves is what are we doing in practice that's going to help cultivate and develop these areas and also understand some of them we can't control, but actually we can control our interpretation of them. So some of these things like the weather you can't control, but could I control my interpretation of the weather? Absolutely. If we cultivate within our practice environment. Now, looking at the practice environment, I've simplified this. I know there's many variations from this element, but I've I've broken down commonly over the 30 years I've been working with teams. These are the common elements that you see when it comes to practice design and what you see, although there's obviously variables to these. So you'll see the top one there is drills with no choices. So that's players just repeating. Coach says, stand there, stand there. You pass there, you pass here. Then you have drill with some choices where you may have, OK, we're going to work on this um, zone into man on an example. Um, but let's focus on this. Now, there are some choices there and depending on the pressure load of the opposition can depend again on how easy or hard that is. But you're still working on choices because you're not looking at the whole game. Then we've got obviously breaking down now. We're getting to half, three quarter full size practice with one focus. And then playing what you see, but half court, three quarter court, and obviously could be smaller and then full size playing what you see. So all I want to do in a brief, and I know this is simplifying it, but in a brief way, looking at the pros and cons of each of these uh, and see if that resonates with you in, in your practice design. So let's look at drill with no choices. So what it can provide, where well, you get in high repetition, in an execution element, in a certain type of movement that may be a restricted repetitive movement, but look what you're not getting. 
There's no scanning. So what I mean by scanning is that player is not looking at all the options around them to allow them to make the choice of the execution, which is a critical part in gameplay. The decision making's missing from that. Also, it's too easy to already be in the correct position because we're working on this, so I'm just standing here. So actually part of what you're developing is missing anyway of that moving in and out position to get there. And on top of that movement, there's clearly there's going to be tons of variables. An opposition person can just stand in or move in a different place. You now need to adjust your movement drill to that pattern. But also then that comes into, well, now you need to scan well. You need to start to the game IQ of reading, anticipate, make the decisions based on you and the capability of your teammates as we looked at the individual. So there's a lot missing if we only do that. And a lot of what's missing is the software. And also some of the physical variables of the movement based on the opposition and where your players will be. Now going into drill with some choices. So you still have high repetition in execution, but there is some scanning and decision making now where the options are. Now, how difficult or easy that is will depend on the amount of variables you put in there with the choices and how tough you're putting the opposition against, which is a really important element to get in early. What it doesn't provide, well, you're still low scanning because the options are still predictable. So again, they're only going to be working on if you say, well, you can do this option or this option. Well, that's not real in the match. Low decision making again based on that. And too easy to already in the correct position again. And, and again, we, we've had the struggle with the variables of movement that the opposition may give you because obviously they're not going to stand where you or move where you want them to. So again, there is some advantages from the drill with no choices but you can see now especially on the software side there's so much missing moving now into the half three quarter full size practice on the pitch on the court with one focus so you've got more game context because there is some movement going on and, and there are some of those size variables your problem though because it's one focus is you're still not doing the scanning opportunities with the threats along with the opportunities and the threats will come from where where your opposition are moving to and the opportunities are well actually we're only working on this so i'm only going to choose this now that also in practice makes it very difficult for the opposition to get a worthy practice out because two things are going to happen they're either going to say well i know they're going to choose this so i'm just going to stand here and that's going to prevent them from being successful so that's helping no one or actually they're being passive to go, well, I'm going to let you do that. Well, now they're not practicing their own scanning and decision making to be good in there as an opposition defense, whatever it may be, or, or attack, depending on what you worked on. So the game IQ is not being developed in that, this area. Now, moving into the required position from another is almost limited because you're very predictable again. You know exactly what's going to happen. So I just got to move here because I know when I get here, even if it's on a long pitch, court full where i'm still moving around the problem is still the same where it's very predictable of where i'm going to move to now moving into half three quarter size playing what you see so now this is becoming the game like that we're working on so effective scanning you have to look at all the variables all the opportunities and threats the game iq in Choice selection based on the environment, situation, the spacing, the opposition, the opposition's capability, my teammate's capability, my capability, all that working. It still increases opportunities for repetition, but without the repetition. So remember that saying, all we mean there is you, you are still doing it a lot, but it, there's the variables that will be more real in the game to allow you to work those subtle differences to be effective. You can still put some constraints on this. You can still do some variables on this, but there is the advantages moving from the last ones. Now, what it doesn't provide full spacing, uh, especially if you want to move the ball through. So fast sports like netball and basketball or some things that can be missing if you're just doing a defense phase or and then you move on to an attack phase, what can often not be worked on is the ball moving from one end to the other fast and effectively so that transition point often can be missed as just one example and obviously you want it tested in the full game so in a full game depending on which sports some people can slightly chill which is where they start to get switched off and that's when they stop scanning or they start to get lazy the head goes down so again that 
in looking at all options based on what you see in full court that is not giving you when you're in your half three quarter but there are so many benefits to doing that full size playing what you see so now we're into the game full game integration opportunity to check choice selection on and off the ball so you'll see on the next phase what i mean by that in particular not just what we talked about on that individual within the action review process the game like opposition pressure loading now this is really important still if you're doing an attack focus you need if you've got injured players if you've got luxury of if you have an assistant coach if you've got a parent at the lower level that you know is responsible get them to scan the defense and make sure we've set acceptable unacceptable exceptional within the every time fundamentals for the defense otherwise you can come up with a passive defense because everyone's looking at the attack we think the attack's brilliant but actually the attack wasn't that great it's just the defense wasn't very good so it didn't put the level of loading on to test the attack as an example so the opposition pressure um, really scanning for that and giving them real responsibility and meaning and purpose is so important and then obviously what's really great as well is you're checking if the new elements been integrated so long as you're scanning for right we've worked on this we're now going into full pitch full court is it still there let's load the pressure is it still there let's now not mention it in the next session but let's put them in a game which i'll talk about the baseline i mentioned earlier and now we'll see is it still there or have they forgotten about it because it was just short-term memory so that's good data you can work with there now what it doesn't provide ease of athlete to focus on that element you want to improve now there are some folks you can put in here you can put some work ons on you can do some hot one-to-ones etc the variables to help keep it alive in some athletes but it can some athletes as soon as you start putting them into the game again they start going back to the their embedded behaviors if you like their embedded choices when you put them under pressure so there are some constraints and focuses you can you can do within that as well and obviously what it may not provide is a high repetition on the element you work on uh, again that is sometimes a pressure when we go full pitch full court and you don't want to put too many constraints in because then actually if you put too many in the choice becomes so obvious again so it it's so important that we understand where the balance is but we want to get to full pitch full court and there are some interventions we can do but there could be options where one of the other variables that we've just talked about is a good intervention to use to build back into the game and remember it's non-linear so you can you can switch between the two and you can adjust the pressure in in each of those as well now we're moving into the task now i'm going to put a slightly different angle on this that some of you may not have thought i was going to come from but bear with me so clearly each athlete will have the task in front of them linked into their role responsibility in each moment so that is ever changing it's not fixed because too many variables can happen but they'll certainly know what is their role what's their purpose uh, whether ua is on that what is their responsibility in each moment within that role now if we look at these this is something that i really strongly recommend you share with the athletes and you'll see where this makes sense so in the team type sports we're talking about basketball volleyball football rugby etc hockey these elements are so important now it's not the just the elements which i'm going to talk about next so let's look at the basics you have the ball as a player or your teammate has the ball as a player so with each of these we're asking okay so if you have the ball what does that mean to you what will be exceptional and again the actual review process based on their capability and their teammates can help influence that your teammate has the ball same question so now what is your role now your teammate has the ball the opposition has the ball okay so what is your role and purpose now if the opposition has the ball no one has the ball okay so what is your purpose now what are your actions choices so all of these should be really clear and again it's ever changing based on position and situation as it continue the environment changes here's the key point though when a player is not in one of those four they're not actually committed to anything so they may have passed the ball now they're in a bit of a chill mode whatever it may be you you need to be in one of those four to be an effective team member if you're not actively committing to one of them and it may be sprinting to another position still scanning whatever it may be 
you're now a missing player to the team. So you have no value to the team when you're not actively committed to one of those four. This is huge. I've seen teams at all levels, and I'm talking about the highest level as well as international, Olympic, highest professional leagues, where the difference in the team's performance has been how actively effective they, the players have been in all four and how much time they spend chilling, zoned out, not committing to moving from one to the other in a game. Now, with some teams, that might be half a second, might be a tenth of a second. For some, it could be seconds. Now, does that resonate with you? Do you have at any level where you're thinking, actually, yeah, I've got a player now that's just passed the ball and now they're chilling, whereas what they should be doing is move to the next position. Now, again, if you're moving early, that's giving you time to breathe, to scan, to look at the data again, to allow you to make better choices. But this is so important and it's so important we share this. What does this look like? And then I would recommend if, if this is an element that your team is, is not good at, is make sure they understand their roles and purposes in each of these and then work a session of to eliminate the gaps in between. So you're just going to put focus what will be unacceptable, what will be exceptional, and you go for it. How long can we stay? So you can do the time under uh, acceptable or exceptional, whichever you want to go for. How long can we go for where we're actively in one of these four? So once we're out of one, we're moving instantly, pull it from a gun, we're into the next split second. How long can we go for? And then as soon as you see someone not move in between one of those four you do a reset on the time you say what it was and why and then the clock starts again so if they say three minutes they've got to go to three minutes soon someone isn't you're back to zero again you start so that's another tool you can use to really put focus on something as as just one example these are some of the tools the support mechanisms that you can use to help this be successful from the coaching point of view so obviously you've got the action review process here we spoke about with your scanning and judgment identifying the source interventions within them you've got the lighthouse which is your reference that should be really clear to everyone so that helps you in design but that helps challenge them as coach why are we doing this okay so how's it linked to our lighthouse and often if it's it doesn't we shouldn't be using it and it's a good test to check the uae's putting on any task, action, responsibility, role, what would be unacceptable, what would be acceptable, what would be exceptional. Sometimes there isn't an exceptional, but often there is. The permissions, what are you saying to the to your athletes? You can do this without checking on me. I'm giving you permission to do these things. There's a host of them to help them go, okay, I can do this without checking in with coach. With these, I can't yet do. And you may have individual ones with that as well. The rule of three, you may have heard many podcasts on it, but it's a really powerful framework to help them understand. Well, actually, rule of one is me. So what should I be doing now? The action review process, again, helps with that. What do I need to do? I'm struggling. I can't self-manage. I can't work it out. I can reach out to a teammate. Rule of two. OK, someone's reaching out to me. How can I affect them? I'm seeing someone unacceptable in behavior or struggling or making odd choices. What do I do in each moment to help them be effective? The three A's, someone's talking to me, okay, I'm accepting it, I'm acknowledging it, I'm acting on it. Rule of three, a coach. So coach is scanning, they're scanning for one, they're scanning for two. They're making judgment on so many live interventions. Um, I think if you go on one of Stuart Armstrong, Armstrong's The Talent Equation podcasts, I think I shared eight or nine of those type interventions that you could use. So it's, it's a well worth listening on that if you get on to his podcast. So they're just some of the basics can help you develop and cultivate the elements you want to not just in the planning but also live in the moment to help cultivate a self thinking live decision making with commitment with confidence interdependent team so now we get back to the beginning of the model I shared so you can see now why I split match environment to practice environment and and how actually the match should be our reference for the lighthouse to our design in practice but also our, our own check and challenge of why we're doing those things and how do they connect to the match but also the live adaptation based on what you see on individual and team capability and also understanding that task and, and it, are we clear on that and do we understand that are we scanning for it linked into those elements And these are some of the key elements we spoke about. So the action review process, again, you can see how they all connect in. It's not just an individual it influence on the environment, the task. 
the rule of three and the three A's and the lighthouse, the every times, the UAEs and the permissions. All of these working together gives you clarity, helps cultivate the software, but also importantly gives the athletes clarity, it eliminates the grey, helps them understand their purpose, helps them ensure that they are valued and they see the value. Those three things, purpose, being valued, see the value, really helps the motivation, the commitment, the engagement of every athlete in every moment at every level. On top of the principles I've shared here, there are others that can help bring this alive. Just enhance your coaching and, and impact and influence their athletes towards being a re very effective collective team. The first one is the coaching caps and session type. So this just allows you and them to understand what am I in now? Am I in learning performance competition? Learning being we can't do it yet. So it takes any of the stress away about reviewing based on outcome. It's about what we're doing, choice execution now. The performance, okay, now we bring it alive in our match conditions and the variables within that. And then the competition right now, I'm attempting to catch you out. So this allows you as a coach to know, okay, so what am I doing here now? Am I, can I step in and give them the answer using player first, player last? Do I need to be silent now? Do I give them breathing space? Should I be doing some other interventions? A performance again, actually, no, this is not me now reminding them on what they should be doing. Now it's, it's me doing the check and challenge with them, but also ensuring that actually I'm not allowing them to trip up. But I'm giving them space to work it out now because I know they have the capability which we developed in the learning. And the competition is now I'm attempting to catch you out. So I'm doing everything to attempt to getting ahead to see if I can break it down. So understanding my coaching caps, but also them as athletes understanding, well, we're in learning now. OK, well, I know what that means to me. I'm in performance now. Yeah, OK, I'm in competition. Right. I'm ready for this now, coach. As well as that, we've got our covert recalls that you've heard me speak about of checking. It's not short term recall. We don't talk about it. We're scanning for it in a situation, maybe a defense thing. We say, right, I want you, the success is to look at this in attack. What you're doing is is checking the defense of something you worked on last session or a week ago to see is it still there or is it regressed as an example. The constraints of how you can just manipulate, make things a little bit easier, or harder to put focus on something the individual work on each athlete would have one of them it doesn't change every session doesn't change every week unless they're really fast at connecting in but also it ensures that actually you're keeping that alive it's not something you speak about once a month or in a sit down video analysis you're keeping that alive in a session you may be just before the warm say come on okay how's your work on today so what what could that look like in this session little hot one-to-ones and reviews as we go through all this light and shade to help develop every athlete and the success criteria is eliminating the gray so they understand what is success right now okay it's this so let's not talk about four five fifteen things what is success okay review against that as an example and then we have in here the hot one-to-one -one variations um, as I mentioned, if you go on Stuart Armstrong's Talent Equation podcast, I was on there and I may have been eight or nine. I shared different variables in there. Again, the members area really break this down for you. Time or reps and acceptable is another great framework to get them connected into a focus of an element. We'll still have the variables of a game. The resets again fit in there. Athlete called timeouts, coach called timeouts where they are only a max 10, 30 seconds. You could use them in learning or performance, not allowed to be used in competition. So you can see there are layers to this and all of this helps develop and cultivate software. The element often we miss. We see the value of it, but rarely on session plans is there software focus. Often it's hardware. The hardware is a physical, the technical, tactical. Well, they will not be effective without the software. And look at what we've spoken about now. Nearly everything in here, apart from some of the capability elements, is all software. And it's bringing the software alive. It's ensuring it's tangible. You can check and test it. You can develop it. You can cultivate it. You can pressure load it. That's the beauty. That's what's so exciting about the need-centered approach. Key points, your lighthouse and the actual match conditions are your references in your planning design and the judgment you make to adapt live. So remember, what is the team you want to build to or the athlete you want to build to and what do they need to be and do in order to be effective in the match? That is your reference point. So if they don't connect to that, you need to start challenging why you're putting them into the sessions. 
Nothing wrong with breakouts that aren't full match conditions, but be mindful of whose brains are working. So if you're telling them all the answers, not allowing them to review. If you're telling them where to stand and what to do, and you're not developing their ability to scan, they're making a judgment on something based on conditions, environmental, situational, people capability of teammates opposition, and then committing to that choice and then reviewing choice execution. If you're inhibiting that, you're only partial development. So you're wasting that precious time because you're only focused on the hardware, which will not work without the software. So make sure that in the breakouts, they're still connecting to the qualities and competences they need to transfer into the match conditions. So the software makes the hardware effective. So you've got to place focus on it. On your session plans, you should have a software element, at least one. And many of the work-ons could well be software work-ons. I don't think we've done enough for coaches to help them understand and break down that software into tangibles, understand the impact of it, understand that actually any time you're using a hardware, technical, tactical, physical, there's a software element. So you don't have to go, I, I can't do my technical because I have to do the software. Actually, the technical, tactical, you need that every time you practice the software. But what we need to do is sell it better to the athletes and to ourselves as coaches understand look at the action review process an example we've got being aware managing our state we've got our scanning what does that look like to us how can we develop that we've got our making judgment based on the variables of identifying the options and then actually eliminating options based on the variables of situational environment human capability teammates opposition to commit to a choice and commit without fear not thinking what does the coach want me to do now i've made a choice i'm committing 100 percent, and then review the choice and the execution separately, not getting caught up in the outcome. All of this stuff is going to grow and develop your athletes. Whether they stay in a sport or not, you're going to develop better people. But also, you will develop the people that stay in a sport to be a far more powerful and effective athlete beyond just them being able to show you a tactical or be skillful or be physically fit. Be mindful of present capability as individuals and as a collective. So remember, we talked about that, the capability of someone when they're on their best day, but also their present capability on where they are now, whether that's a fatigue element or whether actually they're getting stressed on something else. It's what is their capability now? And also as a collective, so you put these players on a pitch or a court, this is their capability. You, you switch one, they have a different capability. So how can you identify the sources of what's working, what's not, put interventions in there and also understand Getting athletes to understand that person's capability is lower, that's going to influence my choice when I'm passing to them or giving them an option. Need centered, remember, is influencing the present to achieve a return along the journey. Link to your lighthouse. So don't get caught up in, I need to see an outcome success in this session. Sessions on their own is nothing because you don't even know how effective that session was until the next session or session afterwards when you do one of your covert recalls to check what's been maintained what has stayed in what's been transferred so be patient with it and, and, and express that patient with the athletes where they're so caught up in outcome for so long we're going to say well actually look at what we've developed now we can't yet do it but look at where we are now maybe an understanding thing maybe a scanning thing maybe a movement efficiency thing that hasn't yet shown an immediate tangible outcome every time but they are critical facilitators to get them to where we want to be. And you might take weeks and months and that non-linear progress, but we're going to get there. So the need centered is not what you want to do to see the outcome you want now, which could be just tell them the answer, make it easy for them. It's need. What is needed now to get them to the lighthouse of how we want them to play? And much more on pdscoach.com. So there's 100 hours of the members area. This on its own, I'm hoping will give you a real snapshot to understanding using this model, understanding what is the need centered elements and how does it align to the individual, the environment and the task? And what does that really mean to us as coaches and athletes? And could that influence how we're thinking? Could that influence how we're planning? Could that influence our interventions live in sessions and how more explicit we are at helping athletes understand what they need to do in the moment, give them purpose, get them to see value, get them to see the value in what we're doing. I hope this was useful. Please leave any comments, questions below and share with anyone in your 
social circles or work where you think this might stimulate some real constructive conversation obviously there's a lot in there and i didn't go into all the details but it should give you a real insight into where needs centered approach lies and the real contextual details in each one of those areas we spoke about